Hi guys, so every now and then when I put up a video extolling the virtues of the wonderful automobile, somebody has to come on there and say, oh yeah, I'm not so sure about that. You know, cars, pff, what have they ever done for us? Well, that's a, that's a separate video. The link is below or whatever. I mean, I've got tons of videos of what the car has done for us. But then I say to them, well, what is the alternative? I mean, if you're thinking horses, well, again, there's another video I've done which explains exactly why not horses. When horses were in widespread use, you had disease, you had from the poo, you had disease from the dead carcasses of horses. In fact, in a city like New York, you had 20,000 deaths a year because of deaths caused exactly by that. So then the other thing they come to is bicycles. Bicycles, bicycles. Well, hey, look, you know what? I've got nothing against bicycles or cyclists. However, they are not the answer, and I'll explain why right after this. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. Right, so like I said, to each his own, got no issues with bicycles. I mean, if you enjoy riding them, look, to me, it's transport should be about liberty it should be about what you enjoy what you what works for you and what's the best answer for you so if you can use bikes for getting to and from work then great do that if that works for you then that's amazing if you use it for exercise brilliant i know a lot of people do and it works extremely well for them if you do it for pleasure hey why not you know i'd never begrudge anybody taking a bike uh, off-road or just cycling for the heck of it same thing we do as motorists right no issue whatsoever but when people come along and they say, oh yeah, we can get rid of cars and we can all just use bicycles. Well, first of all, I would never use two wheel transport. And if I did, it'd have to be the motorized kind. And I don't even ride those anyway. But the other thing is, is it's just not logical. It's just not practical. Um, you know, let's just go through some of the reasons that I've listed down here. Uh, physical limitations. You know, bicycles, they do require physical exertion. And if you're young and you're fit and you're healthy, then hey, it makes perfect sense. But, you know, even for somebody like me, it's like, uh, I'm not really, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not overweight or anything, but I'm not in the best in terms of fitness. So we're getting onto a bicycle and I got a dodgy knee as well. So I'm like, that's just not going to work over any kind of distance. I, in fact, to be honest, I haven't ridden a bicycle in 20, 25 years, maybe. I don't even know if I could balance on one. But anyway, it's not right for a lot of people. You know, you're talking about me. I mean, ask, ask your grandparents to go on a bicycle. Ask them to do that, to go for their hospital appointment. See how they get on with that, you know? I mean, it's just, this, it's just ridiculous. It's not for everybody. Distance, and, uh, distance that you have to do. And again, that relates to the same thing. You know, in terms of commuting, if it's very far from where you work, then, you know, that's A, um, I would also say that it's not, and, and I think bicyclists, cyclists should, should, would, would not disagree with me, it's not exactly the safest form of transport out there. You know, every motorcyclist I know had had an off. Every cyclist I've known has had an off, and it's it's it can be dangerous. And it's partly because of motorists not being aware of what's going on around them, um, and it's partly because cyclists sometimes. I mean, I saw an incident just on the street here, and to be honest, it's like um, I couldn't really make up my mind whose fault it was because on the one hand. It was a van that hit a cyclist, fortunately not too hard, he wasn't too seriously injured or anything like that. But you know, maybe the van driver wasn't paying attention, but at the same time, he came across a junction or the cyclist shot across a junction as a van was turning into it. And sometimes cyclists are not aware of the kind of speed that they're doing and the suddenness with which they can suddenly appear, you know, in front of you, out of nowhere, it seems sometimes, you know. And, you know, there's, there's physics here in terms of how quickly you can react and stop a moving vehicle. So, you know, I think there's, you know, there's, but having said that, the same result um, is there in that it's not always the safest option if you're going over a long distance. Um, you may also find that if you dress for work, if you have to wear a uniform or whatever, if you've got a long distance to go, you know, you get into a car, you get in with your clean suit, your clean shirt, your clean shoes, whatever. When you get out the other end, they're pretty much clean and everything. Okay, maybe they might not be as pressed as they were because you know you do get a bit of scrunching uh, on the seat or whatever but you know generally they're in good condition but if you're on a bike and you're going a long way and even in good weather you'll find that your clothes have got grease on them or whatever and you know they're not quite as clean as they were your shoes may have picked up stuff and if the weather is bad and god forbid and again bad weather also uh, contributes to safety as well because suddenly if the road surface is slippery or it's cold or you know if it's too hot and you're getting tired and of course don't forget that 
You may think that hot weather is good for cycling. Yes, absolutely, enjoy it, but make sure you stay hydrated. Make sure you have a hat on because you can very easily suffer dehydration and even, God forbid, a sunstroke. So, you know, precautions are necessary. Whereas in a car, you just turn on the air conditioning. So, you know, that's it's gotta be one of those things. Transporting stuff, you know, and at the end of the day, I mean, like, okay, you can put some stuff on the bicycle. There are transport couriers, there are sorry, bicycle couriers and people like that. But at the end of the day, if your mate says, I need to take this TV down to a neighbor's, um, two blocks away, are you going to put it on the back of your bicycle? I mean, to be fair, in some parts of the world, you have seen that. You've seen some incredible things being transported by bicycles, but I can guarantee you that person, if they had a choice of doing it on a bicycle or in a car or a pickup truck or whatever, they'd be doing it in the car or pickup truck because they can't, needs must sort of thing, you know? But the reality is it's much more dangerous, much more trickier, and um, not really ideal for that sort of thing. Um, infrastructure. Uh, you know, in some places, the cycling infrastructure is not quite there. Over here, for example, where I am, um, in Kingsbury, you go along Kingsbury High Road and there's a cycle lane on each side of the road in the pavement. There's a dedicated cycle lane, which is nice, but except that nobody's, hardly anybody's on it. So there's a whole chunk of the pavement that's dedicated to cyclists and you get maybe only the occasional cyclists on it. However, it's only for that bit. So on the other side of the roundabout and on the other side of the end of the high road, there's no more cycle lane. So it's just like, well, you put it there, but then you didn't put it in the rest of it. So what, what, what was the point of that then, you know? I mean, in certain places in London, they have done that. But again, some would argue that they've taken up too much space, you know, and they put these bars in. So I was driving through London the other day and I noticed the cycle lane is divided by these poles, you know, along the way. And again, uh, to me, there was, a, there was a biker that was coming up on my left and I kind of slowed down because I thought, okay, and it was, it was not a cyclist, it was a, an actual motorbike. And I thought, okay, I better slow down because otherwise he's not going to be able to come in before the poles start. And in fact, then he just went ahead into the cycle lane and started weaving through the poles. So again, I'm like, well, that's kind of, I mean, wouldn't it have just been better to not have the poles instead of suddenly providing an obstacle which could endanger him and endanger me as a result as well. Um, the cost, bicycles aren't cheap. And in fact, you know, when you think about how much some of these people spend on uh, the bicycle and on the gear and the safety gear and all the rest of it, you could probably get a little scooter for that. And I don't mean like an e-scooter, I mean like a Vespa or something like an actual scooter, you know. So, um, you know, which would probably be my preference. But again, I don't ride. I don't ride at all. But if I did, then, I, you know, it'd either be a scooter or it'd be a goddamn Harley Davidson. <laughs> One extreme or the other. That's how, that's how it would be, you know. Um, you know, and I think so that, so that fundamentally is an issue. But at the end of the day, it's the realities of using a bicycle. You cannot say it's for everything. For a lot of people in, a, in an urban space where they have short distances and they need to commute those distances, it could make perfect sense and it's absolutely fine. And you should absolutely do that. If you're doing it for leisure, if you're doing it for exercise, you should absolutely do that. And that's all, all, and that's all fine. And I, I don't begrudge anybody doing that. But to try and impose that solution on everybody to say, well, you should all just ride bicycles, that's complete nonsense. You know, I mean, good luck, you know, if you, you're pregnant or you have a pregnant wife, you're trying to get her to hospital, good luck with that. If you have to take an old person to hospital, good luck with that. If you have a three or four kids that you have to ride, I mean, how many little things are you going to put on the back of this bicycle to carry all your kids to school? It's just not practical. So it's a very short-sighted solution to say, oh, cycles are the answer. Like I keep saying, they're one answer, just like everything else. There are many, many answers to our road transport problems. Not one answer. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Keep your mind open. Catch you all in the next video. Brown car guy. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, please hit the like button and share this video as well if you can. And while you're at it, check out these guys who also sponsor my content. I am deeply grateful to them because it helps me to buy new equipment, put fuel in the cars, and yes, buy a cup of coffee. You can do the same, just go here. Or right here on YouTube, just hit these three little dots down here and click on thanks. Make sure you're signed in first. My content is free, but this is how you can help me keep it that way. I may even send you a gift. Oh, by the way, watch this next.